Hey guys, Russell Miller here. We're on a crash course for Euro Nymphing. We're on rigging. I know rigging is something that not everyone loves to do, um, especially when it comes to the Euro system. I think people, there's a lot of misconceptions that it's, that it's really complicated or there's this or that. Um, when it comes to rigging this setup, it's a really straightforward, easy rig. Uh, once you build it the first time, and then it goes really, really quickly. Uh, you do end up using a little bit more tippet, and we're gonna talk about why you use more tippet, but it really starts with the fly line, right? Um, on here is a level fly line, and uh, the advantages of actually using a fly line that's level is you're gonna see as we're doing our crash course and we're fishing this, uh, there's my, my left hand is very active, right? I'm using this a lot, and I'm controlling my line with it, right? And, uh, and if it was all mono, uh, especially my hands are a little wet and cold, um, my hands get a little stiff, it's easy for this to slip out of my hands and it, it translates to less efficiency out on the water, right? Having an actual fly line is a huge advantage to you as an angler. Um, and the level lines, right, the idea is you want to remove the mass from your line and your leader. Uh, so a level line removes a lot of the mass uh, while still maintaining some of the properties we really like about using fly line. After that comes the leader. Uh, this is Umqua's Phantom X leader. Uh, this is a leader that uh, myself and a number of the other Team USA members uh, have fished and designed uh, for Umqua. The beauty of this is it's a leader that you literally open the package of, you know what I mean? And I, I'll, I'll do it with you. So I'm not just saying what you should do, but we'll do it. You open the package here right, and you put your hands in the middle, and you unwind the perfection loop end, and that's going to open up this leader. And don't open it until it's all the way unwound, otherwise you're going to find you have quite a mess, and this leader is 20 feet in length, so that's 20 feet of, of mess. Uh, so take your time with this initial part. And once you get it unwound, right, you can see I'm just pulling it off nice and slowly. And I'm not making any messes here. And now I'm pulling off a big colored section. That's interesting. Oh, and there's a tippet ring on here. And then there's a lot of level tippet, right? So we're kind of looking at the, the leader in reverse order. And now we're going to talk about all the individual pieces of the leader. So this is our leader here. Uh, it ends in a, in a loop. My recommendation and Umqua's recommendation, which is printed on the back of the packaging here, is to take the loop and get rid of it. Uh, the reason being is where the connection to your fly line is runs through your guides a lot, right? And those, those perfection loops are a fairly bulky knot, and you're going to find that it's clicking in and out of your guides constantly, and it will drive you crazy. Um, it's also an opportunity when you do get a fish, there's a moment as it comes through the guides where it, there's a dead spot, right? You lose connection with the fish. It's a really easy opportunity when you're fishing the barbless flies, uh, like we looked at, that that fish can just let go of that fly. So I cut that off, and I do one of two things. I will either take and I will nail knot this to the end of my line, or a lot of times on the end of these level lines, there's a welded loop. A really, really great hack for all this is to just take and do an, uh, a simple clinch knot to that welded loop. You'll find that that knot is really slim and goes in and out of the guides very easy, and it's super easy for you to do. It's a knot you know. So our first section is nice and long, and it's a thin diameter. This is a 12 pound butt section. And we taper down here to 10 pound, to eight pound, and then we're into this colored section, right? So we've got a, ni a natural progression. We've got essentially a long, stiff material. You can see that there's a lot of memory. This is a nice, stiff material. So as you, uh, as you go, I don't ever recommend using leader straighteners. If you pull, you're going to watch all that fall right out, right? A leader straightener, what it does is it burns the material and degrades it, and that's what makes it limp. You can achieve the exact same result from pulling, right? And you can see all my memory falls right out. So pull on the leader. It's really important, you'll see when we're fishing this, to have a good stiff material here. So I'm just grabbing each of these sections and pulling it. Um, and so I've got a great taper down. 
and I come into my color section here. This is my cider, right? And uh, it's made out of this material here. It's a bicolor material. We do at Umqua here. Um, this is our indicator tippet. And we offer this up to 020. Uh, and and this, is, this is a really bright section. And this is your visual indicator as to where your flies are underneath the water, right? Um, if you're coming over from indicator uh, world, this is your bobber, right? This is what tells you where your flies are doing, but it does so in a far more accurate manner. Um, out of the package, we've got these two really long tag ends. These tag ends can be nice, just like sometimes when you see that bobber twist in the water and you know to set the hook. It can be the same thing here, right? You might see these tag ends kind of swivel, right? And, uh, and you'll set the hook. Um, but this is gonna be how you determine where your flies are. If I wanna fish really deep, I need to achieve a very vertical cider, right? Uh, if I'm fishing a shallower riffle, I'm gonna have a, a far more kind of 45 degree angle to this thing. And if I was gonna be fishing like your classic like riffle, riffle, drop, it would look like this, riffle, riffle, and I stop moving my rod tip and it drops. So it can follow that contour down, right? So this is really what's gonna be uh, telling me what to do. And reading this, and you'll see as, as we go on the water, reading this uh, is really important. I don't ever want it to be really stiff. If it's stiff like this, it means my flies are too heavy and I'm creating now vertical drag in the water, which is again, very awkward to a fish. They don't see that. I don't believe you ever get a may maybe response out of like a fly that's like grr, grr, grr. Um, you want this to drift naturally. So your goal is to have it just have a slight bend to that. And when you get a bite, you're gonna see it tighten, right? So just a slight, slight uh, bend to it. You don't want it tight um, where you're pulling them, just slight. And you're gonna move along with the current and you're not looking at the surface current, right? Visually, you're down underneath where you're fishing your flies in this slower water down here. And if you're, if you're moving them too fast, right, you'll see you're pulling them. And if you're not moving them fast enough, you'll start to see this kind of uh, pile up here. So this is really your eyes to that water depth that you're trying to get your flies into, right? And then at the end of this, 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 this ends in a tippet ring. And tippet rings are super convenient. They make it so you can literally rig up and use clinch knots for all your stuff. So the beauty of a, a tippet ring is you can go from 2X, which is my cider here, straight to 6X, right? Which is a really impossible step to do um, with a with a knot. Uh, it's it's a complicated knot. This allows you to tie two clinch knots to your level tippet, right? And once we're at a level tippet, you can see I've got just shy of six feet, and I've got my uh, my first dropper tag here. And these already come all tied for you, which is really nice. And then uh, I'll have my terminal end right here. And so a dropper. Why do we do everything off a dropper? This is one of the, the critical pieces of rigging this whole thing, is everything is tied completely in line, right? So from the taper of my butt, it all tapers down to this really fine tippet, and then I've got these, these dropper tags. And I tie a dropper tag, and the, the way they're tied on the Yumqua leader, you're gonna make a, uh, a surgeon's knot, feed it through twice, double surgeons, pull tight, and you're just gonna leave a long tag. These tags are about six inches. It's about the perfect, uh, perfect amount. It allows for a number of fly changes uh, before you have to re-tie, and this becomes too short to tie in another fly. Um, and if it's too long, what you're gonna find is it will catch itself and knot itself. So kind of that, that six inch range is just about perfect, which is where we rig ours, right? Uh, and, and the other reason that this is so awesome is uh, if I were to pull on this back, so this is, my, this is my indicator up here, let's just say. If I pull on this back fly, if I'm gonna get a bite, the registration is the same in hand as if I pull on this dropper here, right? And that's the magic of this, is that the registration is the same. In your, in your standard um, indicator setup, you've got a bobber, you're gonna use a tapered leader down to some split shot, you're gonna go to your small, flies and maybe you got two there right and maybe one of them even has a little weight on it your first fly to help keep everything down in that in that low level if the fly, fish eats your back fly it needs to eat it in such a manner that it lifts the weight of the fly in the split shot moves all of the water tension of your tapered leader before it registers up here on your on your indicator right this rig because we go straight off of our indicator 
material to level 6x, right? Uh, there's no drag in here, right? I always want to keep this part just above the water, which you'll see us doing here in a bit. Um, and this allows for no drag and, and you get direct contact that will register, like we talked about right here, um, from either fly, right? And so as we build this, the fly portion that we, we, watch, we, we, we spoke about, and if you haven't watched that video, make sure to jump over and check out talking about building boxes and selecting fly weights becomes really important because that split shot that we had here in our standard rig, those need to be tungsten beads that are built into the flies now, right? So having a variety of different patterns and different weights becomes really critical. Umqua has its entire series of bomb flies, which is available in two different weights to allow you to have uh, some options there. When you're rigging this up, my, my suggestion for, for people starting out, put your heavy fly at the bottom it's going to ensure everything turns over, you're going to get a little better depth control, and put your more impressionistic fly, lighter fly at the top, right? You'll find you get less tangles, and you'll get better strike detection as a result of it, right? Uh, I know rigging can be a challenge for a lot of folks, but we've tried to put it together in a great kind of one-stop package here. Um, there's no way around tying knots and rigging. Uh, you've got to get comfortable with it. You've got to practice doing it because the more you change flies, the more you're confident, you're going to find yourself putting flies in areas where you may lose them and you're okay losing them because you can tie on a fly quickly and get right back into fishing, right? Um, uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to touch on is the idea of this level tippet here. Um, not only is this for presentation, more importantly in these rigs, like uh, if you've seen any of the other trout's videos that, that we've done on Euro Nymphing, I fish six, seven, and eight X even. Um, the reason isn't because we've got tricky fish, right? That's, that's one part of it. The bigger part of it is cut rate, right? So uh, think about how much drag you have on a tapered leader, right? Coming through the surface current. Uh, you've got a ton of drag on that that's naturally gonna wanna pull this, right? And so uh, when we fish something that's really thin diameter, we get really great cutting going through the water. So uh, the, the way to think of it is if you were to drop flies in really heavy current, you want those flies to just fall straight through, right? If you had no, nothing attached to it, they'd fall right to the bottom, almost in a straight line. They might get pushed a little bit. If you put a big piece of rope on there and you drop those same flies, that surface current is going to grab the big piece of rope and move them a lot further before they settle down. So when we use really fine tippet, we reduce the amount of pull that current has on our flies so we can access the bottom uh, far easier um, and it's not necessarily about tricking fish it's about fishing lighter flies uh, so we can fish like two betas right rather than having to have like a big caddis or a mop fly or a leech or something like that so that's why this this big level section of 6x is really important on these leaders Again, rigging can be, can be complicated for a lot of folks, uh, a time-consuming process that we all want to try to avoid having to do over and over. Um, but with a little bit of practice and a little understanding about how to put this whole rig together, you'll find that this system is extremely sensitive within the water and allows you to be very accurate with a little bit of casting practice um, and, and increase your strike detection tenfold for the reasons we stated. So hopefully this crash course on rigging uh, brings you a little bit of uh, knowledge uh, and you can work it into a lot of your other angling as well.